Hi friends, today's video is going to be part one of homeschool Q&A. These are the questions I get asked the most. So if at any point during this video you have a question, please leave it in the comments. I'm gathering questions to be able to answer next week too. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you first of all what four questions I'm answering today and why it should matter coming from me. All right, so the four things I'm going to be talking about today are number one, how to get back to homeschooling, how to get back in the groove after taking an extended break for vacation, sickness, just for break's sake. Number two, some benefits of year round homeschooling, which I have talked about before. So I'll link that video in the description as well as put a little thing up here um, on one of the sides, not sure what side it's gonna be on, but you probably see it right now. <laughs> Number three, how I school multiple ages and how we make that work and make it not take a long time. And then number four, just general, very simply put, how to get started homeschooling if you have not already. And I do have videos on that as well. So any other content that I have that reflects on what I'm talking about today, I will go ahead and put in the description or link directly in the video or both. So let's get started with number one how to get started back to homeschool after some sort of a break so number one and number two kind of go hand in hand we can take breaks kind of whenever we want because we school all year it's not like we don't have to fit it between august and june or september and june i'm not sure exactly how the school systems are set up now but because we school all year even on our break weeks or our off weeks we're still doing things that count if we had to prove to somebody that what we were doing counted which we don't thank goodness but i know there's a lot of you in a lot of different states like new york illinois stuff like that that do have to prove somewhat what you're learning so my first encouragement or my first recommendation would be when you're taking a break still be thinking of what your kids are doing that could count Maybe they're cooking, which counts as math. Maybe they're playing outside, which counts as PE. Maybe they're watching something educational like Dinosaur Train, Wild Kratts, Berenstain Bears even, which counts as a lot of different subjects, science, social studies, whatever it is episode that they're watching. Maybe they're listening to an audiobook. Maybe you're reading to them. See, all of these things can be done during a break. Maybe you don't feel good and you want them to read to you. That counts. So just because you take a break or go on vacation doesn't mean you're not doing any learning. So that's my first recommendation. Figure out what you are already doing while you're having your break and just write that down, okay? Recommendation number two, once you get back into the structure of schooling, go slowly. If you've taken a month off or even two to three weeks off because of something, you don't want to just jump right back in with eight subjects, you know? <laughs> you want to start slow, maybe trickle it throughout the day. You know, maybe you have an hour of structured learning, which is usually what we do during the day anyways. So number one, you can school like all the time, even if you're on a break. And number two, start slow. Do not just jump back in and expect everybody not to get burnt out. Gradually work it in. And now we're going to talk about point number two, which is year-round homeschooling. Why we do it is the biggest question. What is the benefit? What is the reason? Why shouldn't I just do it via the traditional school year? So let's talk about that. All right. I'm in no way saying you shouldn't school via the traditional school year if that's what works best for you. No. Nope. I am simply saying We've tried a lot of different schedules over the years. I've been homeschooling literally the entire time. My oldest is about to turn nine. So she asked to be homeschooled when she was two, which was so long ago, but so cute. She wanted to go to school like the big kids. I hope the airplanes aren't too loud in the back. We live by an Air Force base, so sorry. <laughs> um, so I've been schooling for seven years, but really if you think of education as an extension, just an extension of parenting, I've been schooling for nine years. You're teaching your kids things, you're helping them, figuring them out. That's all part of homeschooling. So why do we do it? It's easier for us. It's easier for us to look at it from January to December, 
look at the calendar, look at our homeschool year and just say education is a part of our life every day. So we're just going to do it all the time. And now, like I mentioned in point one, that does not mean we're always sitting down and we're doing book work and whatever that is all the time. No, we do structured schooling four days a week, which is usually Monday through Thursday, but sometimes <laughs> more recently we've been taking Tuesday or Wednesday off. So it's like two days of school, pause, two days of school, you know, two pauses and then continue, which has been really nice. But on those off days, if I needed to write something down that my kids were doing and learning, uh, there's so many things that I could write down. I could write down that they're listening to books that we're reading at night, that we do little um, math questions and stuff throughout the day. They're planting a garden, you know, learning about science. Uh, whatever shows they're watching might be educational. They like to watch like art type videos with my husband, which totally counts. You know, they're always playing outside. Those are things that we just do. We just, we just are those things. Four days a week is when we sit down, you know, we have an actual school plan. Now, if you're the unschooling approach is might be for you if you don't want to do any of the sit down every day. Um, maybe you just want to learn the way you live and that's totally okay. And that works extremely well with year round homeschooling. So the main reasons that we do it, it's easier, it's more flexible, it's a lifestyle, not just an educational approach. It's easy for us to say, hmm, I want to go on vacation this week when everybody else is in school, rather than saying our spring break is with everybody else's spring break because my husband and I are more introverted. We like going places when there are fewer people, we can enjoy ourselves more. So there are a lot of reasons we year round homeschool. Those are just a few of them. Like I said before, you can check out our other videos on that. I have an entire playlist on TikTok about year round homeschooling, something I'm very, very passionate about. And I also wanted to mention, don't forget to look at the blog post that goes with this video. I'm gonna be writing all of this down as well. And please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the little notification bell. I am very, very happy to have all of you here and let's go ahead and move on to the third point. Okay, and then point number three was, how do you teach multiple ages? Easy, and I will tell you, and this multiple ages, I keep doing this a lot, sorry. The <laughs> multiple ages is the basis for the curriculum that we create. The reason that we do what we do, and I say we, but it's really me, the reason I started this, the reason I make the levels the way they are, the reason the subjects line up the way they do is so it is easier to teach multiple ages at the same time without it taking all day. All right, so I'm just gonna go through a sample schedule with you to kind of show you how we separate things. I'm gonna pause this really quick and come back after the airplanes are done because they're really loud. All right. So science and history are done together we read or we do the activities or whatever it is together and then if there's something like writing or something that goes along with it it's easy for them to do it at the same time just differently so my seven-year-old for example would narrate to me i would write it down for him and then he would copy it but my almost nine-year-old she would either narrate it to me um and you know, listen back and write it down or just write it down. If she wants to, she can do it the same way as him. But because she's older, she does it a little bit differently. Same for history with her history notebooks. She writes more than he does, just like that. Now, with math and English language arts, we study the same subject or sub-subject, whatever you want to call it, at the same time. But I do it separately with them. So it's a little bit longer for me, but still the same, you know, same for them. So I start with devotional. We all read together. Then they do their, um, their little unit based on the devotional. Then it's read aloud time. I read to both of them. If there's a accompanying page, they do the page at the same time. My seven-year-old does manuscript. My nine-year-old does cursive. Then we move on to either science, social studies, or history, whatever it is we're learning at the time. Now we're doing social studies with the Berenstain Bears right now. So I'm going to use that as our, um, uh, <laughs> I can't think of the word, example <laughs> right now. I will read the books. We'll watch some of the Berenstain Bears if they have it with that unit. 
then we do the activity, then we do the copy work. They do that at the same time, just differently, like I mentioned, manuscript and cursive. Um, if it was history, we would be reading the book or most of our history is reading the book. So reading the book and then they would be writing in their history notebooks. If it was science, we would be reading and then doing the activities. You see how that goes like that. Then we would move on to English language arts. Right now we're doing grammar, which is done together. It's Mad Libs. I ask my daughter more questions than I ask my son to answer. When they do their writing, they're, they have different words or different pages, but we do it at the same time. Spelling, again, they have different words, but we do it sort of at the same time. So day one, they're usually looking at their lists, memorizing them, writing them down. And then on Thursday or whatever the last day of our school week is, I will give them spelling tests separately. So, you know, first the oldest goes, then the youngest goes. And then with math, same general thing. It's the same subject. Right now, we're, um, we're just working through some of our checklists here so that I can see what all they have left in a certain level before I move them on to the next level. And what I'll do is I'll just say, okay, whoever went first for English language arts gets a break. And that person who went second is going to go for math first. And I'll go through, you know, with them, go through their equations, whatever it is. Then once they're done, they get a break and I move on to the next one. We follow the Charlotte Mason method in the aspect of short quality lessons. So something that I do with each one of them separately isn't going to take more than 15 minutes. It's usually 10. It can be 15. But what I've noticed with my kids specifically, with their <laughs> attention <laughs> being all over the place, is if you do a short lesson, but you make it, you know, you pack it full and you... Uh, make it engaging they're going to remember more than if you sat there for 30 minutes or an hour because they're going to lose interest and they're not going to remember anything they're saying so that's how i teach multiple ages like i mentioned before if you have any specific questions that i can answer like ages or grades or just any homeschool question at all please ask me in the comments and let's move on to number four simple to the point how to start homeschooling today or next week if your kid is still in public school, we'll say next week. So if you're in public school, number one, you go to your district office, school office, whatever it is, you tell them you're pulling your child out. Depending on the state, um, you might need certification, like you might need to prove you're a high school graduate, yada, yada, yada. It depends on the state. So go to your district, tell them you're pulling your kid out, pull your kid out, the end. It's really that simple. Now, of course, you'll wanna figure out what your philosophy is and your curriculum style and all of this kind of stuff, which I help you all with on my website for free. And I'll include all of those links in the description as well, but you'll wanna to go to the Homeschool Help and FAQs page on my website, take some quizzes, say what your learning style is, and download the eBooks because they're also free for email subscribers. So, pull your kid out get started. You'll just go through and, you know, answer those questions. And I think it'll really help you if you're in homeschooling for the long haul. Now, if your child has never been to public school, it's even easier to start homeschooling because all you do is start. You'll want to see what the age limit is um, for your state where you have to notify your district. In most states, it's seven. Some states, it's six. and some states, they don't require you to notify them at all. Like, it doesn't even matter. Idaho, Texas, and Alaska are some of those states. I'm not sure what other ones. But that's what you want to do. Go to hslda.org, search for your state laws, see what age you have to notify them, what qualifications they want you to have, and then just start, just do it. If they haven't ever been to school and you've just been parenting them at home the way you are, you're already homeschooling. You just have to add in a few academic things now. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please ask. Do not hesitate to ask. I love answering questions. Like I said, I've been at this for nine years. What most of you don't know is that I actually, I wanted to come home from school in seventh grade because I hated in my school. It was terrible. We were in California, it was a whole thing. So I came home, I was able to zoom through and I graduated when I was 14 and went on to community college, then regular college. So I know a lot about homeschooling and I know how much 
easier it is in 2023 than it was, you know, back in 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. It's so much easier now. There's so many resources and I am here for you every step of the way. I love you all and I will see you next week for another four questions.